for now. The sun is out. One of my panellists' feet are out. I can see one of their hairy toes. I won't tell you which it is. Uh, I'll leave it to your imagination. But, of course, the sun uh, gets us all excited, doesn't it? But, of course, it comes uh, along with less exciting things, such as warnings. You can't uh, switch on your telly or pick up your newspaper these days without seeing some kind of warning, bright red uh, pictures, crisis, heat wave, you name it. I mean... Gosh, you'd think, uh, actually, we can't handle the weather in this country, not least because, of course, all the transport systems fail, the schools have to shut, and on and on it goes. But if you've got solar panels, you might be thinking, yes, I'm all right, because it's sunny. Well, no, because, actually, they barely work, so it seems, in the sunshine. Uh, they start reducing when it comes to their efficiency, but don't worry, because we've got coal, haven't we? Remember that? We're only just about to uh, use it, aren't we? We've just stop oil have their way, we wouldn't be able to use it, these lot, these clowns, if you ask me. They've started um, advocating drum and bass slow cycles <laughs> to try and get the government to stop uh, with their oil and gas. Uh, but don't worry, because if you're all stressed out, you can go and uh, water your garden. But you can't even do that, can you? Because you guessed it within about a second of it being sunny. There's a hose pipe bam already. Uh, despite, that is, the hottest, uh, the wettest March and April on record. I can't make all of this make sense, Alex. I sit there and I think, I don't know what is wrong with this country. Well, let's take the bit that is kind of most um, tangible first. Um, I appreciate it's frustrating to people if they've paid all that money to have solar panels put on their house so that some of them won't work in certain conditions. But it's just part of smoothing out the wrinkles of new technologies. And the trend is clear. The trend is towards more renewables over time. And I think that's uh, for the good. But what's happening this week with firing up a, a coal-fired power station reminds us that probably for, the, for my lifetime at least, while we'll have more renewables in the mix, we won't have only only renewables. Mm. So it's good to be realistic about where we are. Yes, we've made progress. Yes, we should, we should encourage and want to have more renewables in our energy mix. But we've got to keep our options open and flexible as a country, not least so that we can remain you know, energy sovereign and energy independent from our neighbours. Do you have solar panels at home? Uh, they tested apparently at a benchmark of 25 degrees. For every degree rise in temperature above that level, the efficiency is reduced by 0.5 percentage points. I don't know why I'm laughing, because uh, I do feel a bit mean. If you've got solar panels, you might not appreciate me laughing because you've probably spent an awful lot of money. You talk about energy mix. Uh, I can just bring that up on the screen. I took a live shot of National Grid earlier on today just to have a look at where our energy is coming from. Can we get that up on the screen? There you go. So if you actually look at this, uh, you've got about 44%. This was like a live snapshot just before the programme. You've got about 44% uh, percent coming from fossil fuels, about 25% uh, coming from renewables, 15% coming from uh, other sources and the remainder uh, coming from other countries. You know, when I see that and then I think, Paul, about people like Just Stop Oil and all the rest of it, you're absolutely deluded. You can't stop your oils and your gas and all the rest of it because we are not at the place where we need to be when it comes to uh, things like renewables. Well, I'm, I'm as green as the next person, but it just strikes me that we're, we're going through constantly in this country this kind of ridiculous exercise in self-abnegation where we are depriving ourselves of a critical thing that we clearly need. And... I just can't see, really, that it's anything more than posturing on the international stage, presenting ourselves as friends of the environment, when, actually, when you, you look at the carbon emissions from countries like China and the US, and, of course, carbon emissions don't understand national boundaries, um, it's, it's hard to see that it is anything more than posturing, actually. And we do have, and we've seen it over the last couple of years, a chronic lack of... Uh, energy security, of energy independence in this country. Uh, I think we were far too quick to phase out coal. We've seen what can happen when there is one international conflagration, you know, the Russia and U Ukraine crisis and what that has meant for energy bills, for energy security and so on. Um, and I think we need to, to, to get our skates on in terms of looking at clean coal technology, in terms of looking at fracking, in terms of uh, exploring nuclear in a way that, that, that we haven't been serious about for so many years. Um, and well, you say we've not been serious about it for many years. One of the challenges right. in this country is the amount of short-termism. So I'll just play you this. This is a clip from uh, 2010. Yeah. Nick Clegg, you might be familiar with it. Listen. The most optimistic scenarios from the government itself, there's no way they're going to have new nuclear uh, come on stream until about 2021, 2022. So it's just not even an answer. 
See, he got a lot of stick for that, right? It was in 2010. But for me, it does summarise. There is not a lot of long-term... There's a lot of long-term yeah. promises and chat, but actually all politicians really care about is getting themselves re-elected, so all this long stuff gets kicked uh, out. If they had greenlit um, more nuclear power stations in the uh, Clegg era, Cameron Clegg era, we would have had them on stream by now, mm. at least the start of them, and I think that that is a salutary lesson. Of course, they did do some um, activity in that space. That's why Sizewell C went ahead, and that's why um, we've seen, because of the argument about Chinese investments in it, we've seen the Hinkley Point um, uh, development. But since the 90s, we've had no real development, no significant major development in nuclear. And one of the things I would take issue with about the chart you showed, which is still useful, is that I don't think coal is the same as gas. Gas is a bridging technology to a, to a much healthier energy mix. Coal is far more polluting than gas. And I think nuclear is a renewable. I think nuclear deserves to be in a category. It's, it's such a clean uh, method of, of production that we should think about it differently. But if we go around thinking to ourselves it won't come in the next six months or year, so we shouldn't do it, we will deprive ourselves, we'll deprive our children of an energy mix worth uh, the mention. So I just want to pick up on what Paul was saying. I certainly agree that the fact we've had to fire up coal power, fire station, uh, power stations to uh, give power this week demonstrates that there's an issue with how quickly we tried to phase out coal. But uh, on the other hand, I don't think Britain's just been posturing on the international stage. I think it's good that we've led the uh, renewables debate. I also think it's good that in this country, it's broadly speaking, not a partisan political issue. It's uh, an issue sometimes within parties. On the left, it's an issue about what they did with coal mines. On the right, sometimes it's an issue with how fast you go with targets. But but it's not an issue between become, net zero has parties. Become, uh, political now, hasn't it? Yeah, but it's still not a really a divisive issue between the political parties. You wouldn't say Tories are on one side of that and Labour's on the other. That was my point. We saw, Alex, uh, over recent years before the energy crisis struck, it wasn't uncommon to see government ministers, energy ministers, standing outside coal fired power stations which had just been decommissioned. Um, and uh, you know, there's a photo opportunity saying, isn't it wonderful we're closing this place down? You know, look how sure. green we are. Um, now, I'm all in favour of, of renewables, certainly, but we all know that renewables at the moment, and I'm not saying you can test this point, um, uh, are unreliable. We know they're unreliable, so you've got to have that backup plan. And I, I, I couldn't agree more. That, that no one has seriously held to account um, governments and government ministers who were quick enough to take the plaudits in terms of those PR opportunities, yeah, yeah. closing down coal-fired power stations, and they're now starting them up again because we don't have that energy security. And the truth is that we have, for too long in this country, essentially allowed a, a 16-year-old girl to, to... She was at the uh, time... Greta. To, Where's to, she gone, by the way? Decide, ...to decide our energy policy. Where's and she that's gone? not serious politics. That is giving in. I think she's still around, but look, I'm, I agree with you. I'm, to, to what I'm, as I'm, I'm in many parts of this. I'm just as Greta doubt as you. But the point I was trying to make about the, the image that we saw is that if you start, stop thinking about fossil fuels all being in one place, we should have built more gas-fired power stations as we phased out coal. And if you stop thinking about nuclear as not being renewable, and all our argument was we needed to do everything in renewable, we neglected gas and we neglected nuclear and we're learning to our cost now what that meant. But you see, I've got a solution to this and I'm sure you'll all tell me why it won't work. But I think in this uh, society there are some issues that are too big for uh, party politics, that are too big for a five-year election cycle. So, for example, I would put NHS, uh, I would put things like uh, industrial strategy, uh, energy strategy, and I would create a cross-party, uh, some kind of committee or whatever, yeah. and you determine the long-term strategy. That's absolutely disastrous. And why? I think it's a great idea. <laughs> because, What's wrong with it? Because it's anti-democratic. In the end, you are you are openly calling for an oligarchy. Uh, you are openly no, calling for... No, because you should all be represented. You can take a representative from all of your different parties... Yeah, but you have, the point about a democracy is that people are directly elected by the people. But it's not the working, system though, is it? Hence we've got short-term thinking, hence we're in the mess that we're that in is now. The, that is always the call of the tyrant. As it's not working, I should run the place. It's, it's, well, I think the, the, I'd do a better job, actually. There we are. The, I do. The, the danger is, I mean, I'm, I'm all in favour of cross-party working where it's sensible to do so, but the, the, the danger is that, that what you're advocating, uh, Michelle, is an argument against democracy per se. Correct. It, it's to say, look, because there are differing views on this, or, or in some cases where there are the same views, get everybody working together um, and therefore take it away from politics. Let's well, depoliticise the, the problem is these issues cannot be depoliticised because people out there in the country do 
have different views. I'm, not, say, I'm not saying because there's different views, let's take it. What I'm saying is the system that we have, the short-termism, your five-year cycles where you only care, really, if we're honest, about getting yourself a job in five years' time, that is not working. The system uh, is broken. We are in a mess. With your real system has the reverse things. of that, which you, means you can well, never... I think, I think if if government great. fails you, you can at least in the end throw the bums out. And the system you're pointing to, you never can because you've creamed off this oligarchy at the top that will never truly be accountable. And if it's good enough for energy, why isn't? Why wouldn't it then be good health, enough for health, prisons, care, for education, no, military? No, I, I, I said, I said health. It'd be everything. Yeah, you and actually, in a pincer movement. Now, yeah, I, you could do all of your long-term strategy in this um, committee. I'll put my hands up to lead it. I'll do a good job, and all the rest, all your day-to-day -day stuff. That's what you can. So um, something elect like um, to do. maybe something like a ten-year plan, like we saw in the Soviet Union. Ba -ba, ba -ba, ba -ba, a twenty-year ba -ba, plan. Ba -ba. Hey, listen, I know you lot at home. <laughs> Some of you lot at home. Dubious. You lot at home are more sensible than these two, and I reckon that there'll be people out there that are cheering at their screens going, yes, Michelle, that is the answer. Some of you on that water thing pointing out as well that there have been no new reservoirs built for about 30 years. You're absolutely right. We've increased our population, we've increased our water demand, but we haven't increased our infrastructure. That is my point. But, of course, uh, if you're near Portsmouth, you'll be shouting at your screen telling me uh, that there is indeed a new uh, reservoir underway. 2029, I think, is when that is due to go live. Will it happen? Time will tell.